Valentine. How's everybody doing on this wonderful morning? Good deal, good deal. Well, y'all stand up. Most of y'all are already doing it. Let's get ready to worship the Lord this morning. Let's sing this out together this morning as we praise the Lord.
who has set eternity in motion. There is just one who can calm the storm with just a whisper. Who can make the darkest demons run? And who can break the curse of generations? There is just the one. So what we're singing about? The mighty Lion. The mighty Lion of Judah. The pure and spotless Lamb. The Alpha and Omega. The good and great I Am. The one we bow before Let every boy sing out Who is like, who is like the Lord no way. Let's sing And who could carry sin upon his shoulders And who endured the cross and scorned its shame who was laid to rest like every other but who rose again stormed out of the grave the mighty line of judah the pure and spotless lamb the alpha and omega the good and great i am the god that saves the nations the one we bow before Let Jesus, there is no other, and your word will never change, and your name is here to stay. Jesus, there is no other, Jesus, there is no other, come on. And you are the one true King, you Lord over everything. Jesus, there is no other, Jesus, there is no other, and your word will never change. Come on. Your name is here to stay. Jesus, there is no other. Jesus, there is no other. The mighty line of Judah, the pure and spotless them, the Alpha and Omega, the good and great I am. The God that saves the nations, the one we bow before. Let every boy sing.
Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. The light of I just want to speak. Every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Sing it with us. Your name is power. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shout through the shadows. The From the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Sing that again, church. Lift up your voice. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Let him hear you. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Sing again. Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Lift it up. Go move on. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the Break 
the mercy, the truth that you give us, Lord. I pray that today as Pastor Jimmy comes and brings the word, that we just we just stay in this moment of worship, Lord. Even though we're shifting out of the time of music and musical worship, worship's an all-time thing. It's how we live our lives, Lord. It's everything that we do. We just to do it to give glory to you. Because you, just like I said, Lord, your name is great and great that you be praised. Let's praise you as we learn about you this morning. Let's praise you as we live our our lives. Let us praise you as we work at work, as we take our kids to school, as we teach our kids how to be good Christians, how to be good adults. Just everything we do, Lord, just let us be led by you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Nice to see you all today. Well, welcome to Ridgeline. My name is Danielle, and I'm so glad you are all here today. And Man, that was so good. Can we give our worship team a round of applause? All right, so while you're still standing, I'll hurry and get this over quickly for you. But if you haven't downloaded the church app, go ahead and do that. We have our calendar on there of all of our events. We have places for you to sign up for those events as well as a past sermons and all that stuff. So that's a good way for you to stay plugged in and see what's going on in church. So while we wait for Pastor Jimmy to get up here, y'all go ahead and tell somebody you're happy to see him this morning. Good morning, Ridgeline. We're so glad that you're here this morning, excited about what God is doing. Can we give God a round of applause? Let's, yeah, let's start off right. <clears throat> Amen. We get to come here and we get to worship the Most High, and this is an exciting day, excited. Glad you guys are joining us this morning. Um, thank you, worship team, always knocking it out of the park. Just want to say, introduce myself. My name is Jimmy Davis. I'm the lead pastor here. If it's your first time joining us, thank you. You just might have walked into your new church home, and we are excited to have you this morning. So, real quick, I heard a story. We're going to jump off into our message in just a second, but I heard a story of, of a <clears throat> one Sunday morning. This mother, she went to wake up her son and tell him to get ready for church, and so she, she shook him. He rolled over and said, honey, sweetie, it's time to get up and go to church, and he looked at her and responded, I, I'm not going today. And she goes, oh, really? Why not? And he goes, well, I'll give you two good reasons. And she said, what are these two good reasons you got? She said, he looked at her and said, they don't like me, and I don't really like them. And she said, oh, yeah, well, I'll give you two good reasons why you should get out of bed and go to church. He said, what's that, Mom? He said, you're 54 years old, and you're also the pastor. So there you go. So <clears throat> time to go to church. Uh, so anyway i got a message for you guys this morning. Before we jump off into that, just a few things. Make sure um, we're going to be kind of pushing this pretty heavy. It takes around 300 people to pull this off. It is our biggest event, uh, fun outreach that we do. Um, it's uh, the Fall Festival. Make sure you sign up today. Get your name on the list to serve. And it's, a, it's just a great time uh, to come together as a body of believers and just show our community uh, that we love Jesus and we can have fun as we do that. So um, make sure you sign up for that. Also, we have been working on a cry room. If you have a little bitty uh, baby who gets a little fussy and you need to uh, uh, take it out of the, the sanctuary for a minute, right over there as you're heading out the awning door, there's a room right there that is available for you today. It's not completely finished, but it's, it's pretty, pretty close to being done. So it's, it's right down the awning hallway. You can go there and uh, you, can, you can get the little one to uh, calm down or whatever you got to do, feed it. And uh, we're, we're, like I said, we're still going to try to get TVs and stuff in there for you, but we're not there yet. But it is available to use today if you need to use it. And last, thank you guys. Uh, if you have not joined our Sunday school programs, please, please stick around today and do that. We are, we're uh, trying to get everything in gear. It has, it has been um, uh, some obstacles we had to jump through, but I promise you, in the long run, this is, this is an amazing thing we're doing. Uh, somebody said, actually, I had a couple people say this. A lot of churches are getting away from Sunday school. 
um, but not us. We're going toward it. Why? Because it's a time when we get to sit down as a body of believers in small groups, and we get to learn the Word of God together, and we get to really dive into it deep and ask questions and learn about God, and, and um, uh, there's, there's too many shallow Christians in this world, and our job is to make uh, ourselves as, as, as sharp as we can when it comes to the Word. And so that's what we're trying to do is just give you every opportunity to sharpen ourselves uh, before mankind and before the Lord so that we know the word and we know who we are. So if you haven't joined Sunday school, man, try it out today. We'll, we'll grab you a chair if we run out of chairs because it's been, it, honestly, it's been pretty packed. It's pretty awesome watching everybody come together and just kind of kind of get to know each other and, and just to be that, that, that group of people. And so that's uh, every Sunday between services, so we'd love to have you. All right, well, last week we're, we're talking about kings and kingdoms, how this all got started uh, when they went from a time of judges who would kind of watch over the land and they had this theocracy. Now they're in this, this reign of kings and kingdoms. And last week uh, we talked about, we've been talking about Saul, the very first king of Israel and how he continued to disobey God. And once again, we found out that he disobeyed God. And in verse 23 of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, uh, Samuel, the prophet, told him this because you, now he's talking to Saul here. He said, because you have rejected the words of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. And if you continue to read the story, you finally see that Saul begins to realize that he messed up kind of the errors of his ways, so to speak. See, God sent him on a mission on a mission to destroy the Amalekites. This was a group as they were heading out of Egyptian bondage into the promised land. This group kept messing with them and, and invading them and it, they would slaughter their, their, their people, especially their babies. And God sent him to destroy them, to wipe them off the face of the planet. But instead, he kept, he, or at least he allowed his troops to keep the choice animals and he spared King, uh, King Agag, which was the king of uh, Amalek, the king of the Am uh, Amalekites. So, so Samuel, at this point, was telling him, hey, God's rejected you as king. And then Samuel took matters into his own hands, and he ordered them to bring King Agag to him. Now, remember, King Agag was the king of the Am Amalekites. And in verse 33, 1 Samuel 15, 33, Samuel declared to him, as your sword has made women childless, so your mother will become childless among women. And then he hacked King Agag into pieces before the Lord at Gilgal. That's pretty, pretty graphic. God told Saul, I want you to kill everybody, including the king. He spared the king, and Samuel said, here, let me show you how it's done. I know this is kind of a graphic example, but nonetheless, as I was reading this, it just made me think that God's given, given us a mission. He's given each one of us a mission in this room today. Everyone in this room has a purpose and a call on your life, something that God wants you to do. And when God speaks to you, let me say this, listen to him, follow him, do what he says. Don't sit back and allow someone else to fulfill your destiny. Go after what God has for you. Because of this, Saul's days were definitely numbered as king because he didn't listen to God. God pretty much said, if you're not going to listen to what I tell you to do as king, I'm going to find somebody else that will do it. And I think we're still, God's still that same God. God wants to ask you to do something, but if you're going to continually deny him, he will find someone else to fulfill that thing that he wants fulfilled in this world. Now as we continue to read on, God is sending Samuel to Bethlehem. Now this Bethlehem obviously sounds familiar. We all know a famous story in God's word where something uh, very awesome happened in the town of Bethlehem. But this was, you know, years before that. Bethlehem, he's sending Samuel there to anoint a new king. And in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 1, it reads this way. The Lord said to Samuel... How long are you going to mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel? God told him, fill your horn with oil and go. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem because I have selected a king from his sons. Samuel asked, like, how can I go? Saul will hear about it and he will kill me. The Lord answered, take a young cow with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will let you know what you are to do. You are to anoint the one for me 
that I indicate to you. So in verse 4, Samuel did what the Lord directed. He went to Bethlehem. The elders of the town met him and they were trembling. They asked, do you come in peace? You ever wondered why it says that? Why, why does the elders come in and say, hey man, is this, is this a peaceful visit? They were scared. But if you remember right, right before this, he just, he hacked up a king. He chopped him up in little pieces, and so they're terrified. Like, what, what's this guy coming to our town for? Who's he mad at? See, he wasn't messing around, and obviously word travels fast in a small town. Ain't that right? Word gets around in a small town, don't it? He looked at him and said, I come in, pl- in peace, he replied. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourself and come with me to the sacrifice. And he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. In verse 6, it says, when he arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and said, certainly, positively, absolutely, the Lord's anointed one is here before him. So Eliab was a lot like Saul. When when Samuel seen him, he was this strapling stud muffin, probably tall and bronze and muscular, strong and handsome. And Samuel said, that's got to be the one. That dude looks just like a king. That's got to be who God is going to pick. It must be the, God, the one that God wants me to anoint as king. But in verse 7, the Lord said to Samuel, don't, don't look at his appearance or his stature because I have rejected him. Man doesn't see what the Lord sees, for the man sees what is visible. But the Lord sees the heart. I just started thinking about that. Isn't it true even today? Today, we still size people up from outward appearances. We look people up and down and kind of like, you know, how, how big old boy are you? You know, you just, just kind of, we size people up. We really do, even today. Matter of fact, we have several social media apps that are dedicated just for that purpose. Like most of the people you're friends with on social media, you're not really friends with them. At best, you're acquaintances. And we can spend endless hours looking at their lives. Oh, they got a new car, man. They got a new car. Look at that new car they posted. Or, oh, oh, look at me and my family on the beach. Hashtag salt life, you know. <laughs> I'm a beach bum. <laughs> no, we're not. We're hillbillies. Look at them. They're at that big concert. Man, that's a big concert. Most of them are like, oh, they're at that concert. Oh, gosh, hope, hope Satan don't fall on them. But anyway, oh, they're, they're always going to the big game. They got their nose on. They got their Razorback hat. Man. Man, my kid's cuter than your kids. Have you ever really, I just want to talk to you for a minute. Have you ever really stopped, for real, just, just stop for a minute. As you're, have you ever just stopped for a minute and ask ourselves, ask yourself, like, why? Why are we so obsessed? Like, really, why are we so obsessed with posting our lives on a digital platform and looking at others. I used to have this problem extremely bad when we first started in the, in the attempt to, to find favor in men. I would get on there when we were just a young church and I would go every day, every day. It was like, it's part of my routine. And I'm about to tell on myself, so just know your pastor loves you and you love him. But I would go on there and I would look for you. I don't care what you were doing. Unless you were like, you know, at a dive bar or something. But I would go in there and I'd look for you and I would like it. Just to show you, hey, I was here. I know you're living a good life. I'm liking your picture. I'm giving you that thumbs up of approval. You know, you know big thumbs. Until God got a hold of me one day. Like, what are you doing? Oh, God, I'm, I'm trying to make them know I like them and I'm watching over them like a shepherd. No, you're not. And I quit. It was a standard I couldn't keep up with. First of all, I don't really even like the platforms. But second of all, if I miss somebody, oh my gosh, what, you like my kid, not my kid. I'm sorry, I, I didn't see that. And it was just a standard that I started worrying about. You wish them happy birthday, but not me. And I, I, it, it just got to me, and God really got a hold of me and just said, if that's why they love you, then they don't love you at all. And so pretty much I washed my hands of it and walked away from it. I feel like sometimes if we ever just really ponder, like, why are we so obsessed with posting our, 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 our lives for everybody to see? 
See, we can spend our whole life wanting to, to be like someone else, wishing that we were in their place or, or had their lifestyle. Or the opposite, we can make sure that everybody knows that we're hashtag living our best life ever. But we get so focused on that kind of stuff that we never fulfill the life that God has for us. Which, by the way, is a much better life and way, way, way more fulfilling. See, Saul was the people's choice. He was tall, dark, and handsome, and he looked like a stinking king, man. He... He was that guy, man. He walked into a room, everybody took notice. See, Saul would have had a great social media presence, absolutely. He would have had millions of followers. He would have had a bunch of subscribers to his YouTube YouTube channel. I mean, he would be posting stuff like, off to slaughter the Amalekites, may burn a cow before I go, Addy K, you know. Hashtag not waiting on Samuel, hashtag hustle life. You know, and everybody be giving him a little thumbs up emojis, little heart emojis. Saul, you're so awesome. Go show those Amalekites. Knock them dead. His appearance looked good, but his heart wasn't there. As Samuel looked for the next king to anoint, so on and so forth, Jesse would bring in his sons up over and over. God would tell Samuel, nope, not it. It's got to be Eliab, man. He looks like a king. Nope. Well, what about this one? Nope. What about this one? Nope. Verse 10, it says, after Jesse presented seven of his sons to him, Samuel told Jesse, the Lord hasn't chosen any of these. Samuel asked him, are these all of your sons that you have? Jesse said, well, they're still the youngest, he answered, but right now he's tending sheep. Samuel told Jesse, send for him. We won't sit down and eat until he gets here. So Jesse sent for him. When he came in, he had beautiful eyes, and he was healthy and handsome in appearance. And the Lord said, anoint him, for he is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brother. And the Spirit of the Lord took control over David from that day forward. See, David was God's next choice to be king. But do you notice something about this story? That he wasn't even in the original lineup. Like as Samuel and Jesse were having this this conversation and they were presenting these young men, like he wasn't even a thought in man's eyes. Even his own dad's eyes. Some of y'all in here today had a bad home life and you're letting that kind of dictate and tell you who you're supposed to be. But in this story, even Jesse looked at his son David and said, surely it ain't that guy. Jesse was like, man, it can't be my youngest son. He's out there tending sheep, and he's out there, got the sheep all around him, singing to him. They look out the window, and David's out there, you know I'm bad, I'm bad, you know it, come on. <laughs> David, come on in here. Woo-hoo-hoo. Yeah. What you want, Dad? <laughs> I'm, I'm, guys, I'm white. <laughs> I am. I'm as white as I can. I wish I had moves, but I got moves like Jagger, like breaking my hips at 70, but I, that's it. That's it. I wanted that to be funny, but I think you're laughing more at me than the actual joke. It's okay, though. I'm humble. But he wasn't even in the lineup. He wasn't even considered. Finally, when he walked in, God spoke to Samuel and said, he's the one. He's the one. And he took the ram horn filled with oil, and he anointed David. Now, to anoint someone means to to rub or to smear oil on them, typically as part of a religious ceremony or, or, or to show a setting apart for a certain task. Now, to anoint someone in biblical times compared to uh, our culture right here, right now, it looked way different. Like right now, we get this little bitty uh, vial of oil, and we'll open up, beep, 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 and we'll get the lid, and we'll put our finger on it, we'll shake it about, get it on our fingertip, and then we'll rub our fingers together. You ever been to a Pentecostal church? I do this a lot. And they'll rub their fingers together, and then they'll touch you here, maybe here, and they'll pray over you. But back then, they would literally pour oil on you, and they would rub it into you. 
This represented the water of life and the spirit of God being poured out on someone or something. It was being set apart for God's special purpose. It was, you didn't walk away going, was you anointed today? I see a little glisten right there. No, no, no. You were dripping in oil. It looked like you just, you just cooked a pound of cheap bacon. You know what I'm saying? You had oil all over you. You could absolutely be seen. You were set apart. God had a purpose for your life. Throughout the Bible, things and people were anointed with oil all the time from tabernacles. They would, they would anoint the, the tabernacle walls or even there was a story where they, they, they anointed a rock. They anointed people, especially kings, leading all the way up to the ultimate anointed one, Jesus. Which, by the way, is from the line of David, which is the tribe of Judah. Samuel was anointing David to be king in this moment, which would eventually lead to the ultimate anointed one, Jesus, the Christ. Now, hopefully everybody in here knows this, but just for clarity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and go through it. Because you may not. We have new Christians in here, and when you first uh, become a follower, there's things you don't know. And, and, and honestly, there's things I don't know still today, but, but this is something that I, I just want to clarify. Hopefully you know that Christ is not Jesus' last name. Like, if you looked in Jesus' senior high yearbook from Nazarene High, it wouldn't be like Jesus, Timothy, Christ. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't Mary and Joseph, Christ. But Christ was a title. Christ is from the Greek word Christo, which means the anointed one. In the Hebrew word, it's a, a, it's a Mashiach, which means Messiah which also translates to the anointed one. So David was fixed to become king, and in the future, from the line of David, would come the king of all kings. A king not like any other king, not even like any other human, the Messiah, the anointed one. Jesus, as he became king, honestly, the world wouldn't understand his kingship. They wouldn't understand, we wouldn't get it. Like they were expecting something totally different when he came. The world wouldn't understand his kingship, but he would eventually fight a battle. And believe it or not, it is the biggest battle in history. In the history of the world, there's never been a battle bigger than the one Jesus fought. Not World War I, not World War II, not the Civil War, not Vietnam. Nothing has ever compared to the battle that Jesus fought. It was the biggest one in world history. It is a battle that had been raging on since the beginning of mankind. And Jesus would win it hands down. He would fight a battle, not with a great army, but yet himself, his own life. He would ransom his life and lay it down. Pay the price for the destruction and the falling of mankind. So that mankind, me and you, can have victory over sin. Aren't you thankful for that this morning? As the band comes up here this morning, we begin to close. Jesus, the anointed one, set apart by our heavenly father to rescue us from the bondage of sin. And reign over us. For eternity as our undefeated, perfect king. As you see as we go through this series of different kings, you're going to see that all these kings had these struggles. Even David. David was a man, the Bible said, was a man after God's own heart. But yet, David flubbed up a lot. A lot. But God still loved him. But eventually, through his lineage, there was going to be someone who was a king. Unlike any other king we've ever seen. And his name was Jesus. And he was undefeated. In 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 55, it says this. It says, O death, where's your victory? O death, where's your sting? For the sin is the sting that results in death. And the law gives death sin its, its power. But in verse 57, it says, but thank God. He gave us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, I don't, my friend, I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what's going on in your life, in your world. But let me just say this. It doesn't take very long to look around and see that we are in an absolute time. 
an absolute time period of misinformation, of deception, of trickery. Everybody's on social media trying to get likes and they'll post the most obscure, crazy, off-the-wall content just trying to make money through, you know, selling their self a million times to make a buck. And so whatever it is, they'll throw it out there, unfa- unchecked, un- unvetted. And so we got a world in chaos right now where no one knows what truth is anymore when it comes to the world we live in. It's like bizarro world. I remember as a kid, I used to watch the Justice League and it had Superman. But Superman's counterpart was Bizarro Man. And he lived in this bizarro world. And everything was just a little off. I feel like sometimes I'm in bizarro world. It's just like, man, is that, is that really is that really a thought? Is that they're really gonna do that? Are they really gonna think that? They're really gonna be that? My point is, is that we live in this world and it's a little crazy right now. It's always been crazy. But there is absolutely a time period we're living in where the wickedness of this world has got a lot of confidence. And they're not scared to show themselves anymore for who they really are. And truth has been so mixed up. Truth has been absolutely so jumbled about. There's so much divisiveness in this world the only truth that we can really stand upon is in God's word it starts and stops with him in this life really all you need to know is in his book he tells you how to live life he warns you about this world he shows you what you should and shouldn't focus on my friend, today, if you're here and you've never made Jesus your king, he is not your king, I would just ask today that you would just say, Lord, I need you to be the king of my life. I want to give my allegiance, my pledge, my life to you. Lead me in the ways that you would have me go. Give me missions and purposes to fulfill for your kingdom. And when I'm drawn home, I want to live in that kingdom for would stand all over this place this morning if that's you and you never made Jesus your savior don't walk out of here today without doing that don't walk out of here please I beg you every person in here has less probably statistically speaking than a hundred years to go in this physical body make today the day that you know that your spirit is going to spend eternity with the king we begin to enter into a time of prayer, if there's anything else that you might need of, physical, spiritual, financial, marital, whatever it is, give it to God. Let Him help you walk you through whatever you're going through in life. He loves us so much. If we could just pray this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for who you are. Thank you for being the King of Kings and you just love us. God, as we enter this time of prayer, Lord, if, if there's someone out there today that doesn't know Jesus as their King, Lord, I pray that they would just absolutely make that decision. They would just say, Lord, I need you to be the Lord of my life. And God, no matter what people are going through today, God, I pray you just meet them where they're at and just lead them through whatever situation they're going through, God. Lord, we'll do our best to pray for them and lift you up, God. And God, once again, we just say thank you for loving us. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we ask these things. Amen. These altars, they're open. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, he's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time, born of his spirit, washing his
pushed over a railroad track and the train hit it as a plane fell on top of it there was a big explosion that's the world we live in today and that will all be gone and we'll just simply get to live a life in peace where we get to praise our heavenly father for eternity that's what a day that will be but until then we got work to do we got people to reach because Hopefully you're saved and you're going to go that way when your life is over, but there's many, many people who are going to burn in the pits of hell. Never intended for them, but nonetheless, the Bible says on that day, they'll say, didn't we do this and this and this, Lord? He says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I know ye not. What a horrible phrase to hear in your last moment before you step off into eternity. And it is the church's job to grab those people and help direct them in the right direction. That's really all we're trying to do here. And you're part of that mission. So today, as we walk out of here, walk out of here with your heads held high, knowing that you are royal blood. And King Jesus is the Lord of your life. But your mission is to go and to get more people and bring them to this place so that they can be sharing the gospel. Heck, you ain't got to bring them here, just share the gospel. Share the love.
love of Jesus everywhere we go. Let's transform this world one life at a time. As we step off into our announcements real quick, we're going to pray over our offering. Your offering helps keep this place going. It helps keep the lights on. It helps keep us getting Sunday school curriculum. It helps us go out to the neighborhood and reach lives. It helps us with our mission projects. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving. If you don't give, jump in. Be a part. I know groceries are high, but I promise you this. I will stand and testify. When you tithe, it works. I don't care what anybody says. When you tithe with the right heart, it works. It works. So if you don't tithe, step off with faith. Say, Lord, here I am. I promise you, he's got you back. On the, on the seat backs in front of you, have envelopes. You can put your tithe, your offering in there, drop it to black receptacles on your way out. You can text the word give online. Set that up to where it's just a reoccurring thing. You ain't going to mess with it. And just do it automatically for you. You can give on, on the church app as well. I just want to say thank you for all those who sow into God's kingdom. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for who you are. God, thank you that we're able to invest in your kingdom, God. God, I'm so excited about that day when it comes, Lord, that I get to spend eternity with you. And I, got to, I get to get to see a lot of cool people along the way, like the Peters and the Pauls. And the, I'm just, it's going to be awesome. But until then, God, we got our mission set out. And it is to serve the King of Kings. So, Lord, as we end this service today, Lord, please, God, Lord, as we sow into your kingdom, God, let us use it to advance your kingdom. We'll do our very best to do that, Father. Thank you for all those who give and just bless them in a mighty way, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty, everybody. If you don't mind, have a seat really quickly. Or go slowly. You got, you're moving slow this morning. That's fine, too. Um, so we do have a few announcements for this morning. Uh, we have a men's drop-in breakfast coming up September 12th. They will have biscuits and gravy and bros. So if you get a chance, come by. That'll be... Oh, go back for me. I need to see that time. Thank you. It'll be 6 to 8 in the morning on September 12th. So if you get a chance, come on in and do that with us, with them. Thank you. We have our ice cream social coming up September 15th from 5 to 7 at Silo City down at the other property that we have. Um, you get to make and bring your own homemade ice cream. Sign up for that because we do want to try all the different types of homemade ice cream um, that you guys can make. I'm always up for that. Then we have our Fall Fest. They mentioned this earlier, but that's going to be our big to-do this year, October 12th. We do need volunteers to sign up for that. So you can sign up on the app. You can sign up at the information desk. If you need more information about it, just go hit them up. They can tell you all kinds of stuff that's going on. It's a great outreach that we have going on. Last year was phenomenal. And then lastly, if you are new to Ridgeline and you want to see what's going on, kind of get to know all the different places we have back here because there's more to the church than just this. Um, go ahead and meet at the very front. We have some uh, staff that will come out and give you a tour and show you what all we have going on. So I think that's all the announcements we have for this week. You guys go out and have a great week, and we'll see you all on Wednesday. <laughs>